During the first four days I've used this device in public, the two most often asked questions I've gotten are, what is that? And then, is that the Samsung folding phone? During the last four days of my review period, those questions became, is that the Galaxy Fold? And, um, did yours break too? It doesn't take long for a flawed product to go from setting the world on fire to getting caught in its own combustion, as Samsung knows all too well. The Galaxy Fold has a major issue with its folding display. Note the characteristic pimple that appeared on my phone on day nine. It's a foreign object or some other defect that probably would eventually result in problems similar to these. To see a defect this widespread, on a phone that would have cost nearly $2,000, so soon after Samsung told the world it redoubled its efforts on quality control following the Note 7 fiasco, it's, I don't really know what to call it. It's disheartening, it's surprising, it's almost unbelievable. But all those saying that this will somehow be the death of foldable phones, I think they're wrong. Because after 10 days using the Galaxy Fold, I can't wait to get mine back. Here's four reasons I think foldables are still the future, and for other reasons why the present is still fold-free. Okay, let's start with the arguments against the fold. Chief among them, it's often awkward. Me, I like a phone that's heavy enough to make my jacket sag, and it's a special nerdy bonus that it resembles a classic smartphone from a decade ago. Most normal folks, though, they just want something light and easy, and the fold is neither. Worse than that, give your fists a little squeeze while you're holding it, and you can feel the two halves of the fold rub up against each other as the hinge flexes. It seems like a small thing, but I've made a habit of calling out companies for charging a ton and then bungling the basics. The Mont Blanc Summit 2, the Asus Nova Go, etc. And Samsung deserves no more slack than those folks get. This is a company that knows, or used to know, how to make great hinges. I mean, I've been using them for 18 years. I was also wrong about something in my hands-on, the outer display. While I still believe you'll prefer to open to the main screen for most heavy use, that outer screen really does feel too small for a lot of things. Calling an Uber, changing music tracks, even scrolling Twitter, fine. But the minute you need to type something or you want to watch a video one-handed, I just forget it. I expect this to be the biggest advantage Huawei points to when it launches its Mate X foldable later this year. But Huawei probably won't be able to escape negative number three, either. See, when you're on the bleeding edge of technology like the Fold is, it's hard not to ship something that looks like a prototype. The giant bezel around the outer display, that raised plastic rim around the interior one, and most damningly, that gutter of a crease running down the middle. I have a few friends with bad eyesight, and none of them had trouble finding the dividing line between the two halves of the display. Even when you view it from the right angle to hide it, you feel it every time you swipe across it. I mean, this is probably just the state of material science in 2019. There's no way to avoid a crease or, or a bubble, but it's still unfortunate. My fourth and final reason you might want to pass on the fold isn't something obvious like the price or the defects that have rendered its release date indefinite. It's the apps. Right now, most Android apps just don't expect that you're going to close them and reopen them on a different screen. So if you're expecting this seamless transition between small screen and big, well, you often don't get it. The app instead restarts and puts you back at the top of your feed, or it stays in its small screen configuration even when you open to the big screen, so you need to manually restart it anyway. The inconsistency means every time you use a new app, you're kind of like, is this going to work or not? Hopefully, the next version of Android helps with this. And now for the four reasons I'm going to miss the Galaxy Fold. Reason one is another thing I was wrong about in my hands-on. The battery life is great. Several times during my week with the Fold, I was too tired or too um, ill to remember to charge the phone before bed. Vacation in my old college town, you know how it is. But despite that, the phone always had at least half a charge when I woke up in the morning. Now that's impressive, especially after a full 14 to 16 hours of use on day one. So are these cameras. 
Now, I expected to enjoy these because they're the same ones I really liked on the Galaxy S10 Plus, but the Fold's big display changes the shooting experience. You know all those goobers who take tablet photos at concerts? Well, they do that because tablet screens are so big they make it look like you're taking a great photo, even though most tablet cameras are terrible. Well, the Galaxy Fold gives you a tablet-sized viewfinder and three very good cameras, telephoto, standard, and ultra-wide. Oh, hey, shout out to the Sprint store I used to work at, MacArthur Center, yay. And if it's too awkward to shoot in tablet mode, because sometimes it is, you can close the Fold back up. This is especially useful for all those selfies. On the subject of greatness imported from the rest of the Samsung Galaxy, the Fold has great fundamentals. Excellent voice quality, loud, crisp speakerphone performance with wide stereo separation, and the displays look amazing. Samsung's decision to stick to a capacitive fingerprint sensor was a good one. It's great to scan in with a quick touch to the side of the phone instead of fiddling with an under-display sensor. And one particular bonus from the S10 family has come in quite handy. The Fold comes with Galaxy Buds in the box, and I've several times used wireless PowerShare to top them back up. It's so nice not to have to bring a separate cable. Finally, the biggest reason I'm sweating for a Galaxy Fold comeback is because right now, it's still the only thing I've used in the real world that can be a phone, or a notepad with a huge keyboard, or a TV, or four different kinds of camera, while changing its size and shape to be a better version of each of those things. I've read two entire books on the Fold in the past week, and I'm sad to go back to my clunkier iPad for them. The size and shape makes this the perfect Kindle replacement. The Galaxy Fold is its own tripod. It's its own kickstand. I'm excited to see the first apps that take advantage of a half-deployed folding phone to function as a mini laptop, not to mention all the other crazy ideas creators haven't even dreamed up yet. And when you're done doing all these crazy things, being able to fold it up and put it in your pocket is a beautiful forgotten convenience that's so overdue for a comeback. If you think the entire future of foldable phones is in the toilet because of the Galaxy Fold setback, well, you're either a YouTuber trying to justify a ridiculous thumbnail, or you've been misled by one. And since there's no helping the former, I'll address only the latter. Folding phones are still the future, folks. And with at least three more expected in 2019, we're just barely getting started. Folks, the Matrix skin on my Galaxy Fold came from my sponsor, Dbrand. I love it because it lets just enough of that Martian green paint job through to make for some fun accents. And of course, it protects the phone and makes it a lot easier to handle, too. If you want your own dbrand skin, they're available for the Galaxy Fold and for most mainstream phones in the market. Hit the link in my description to see all the different ways you too can dbrand. As for official timing on that re-release, well, Samsung's official statement is in the description below, and the second I have another Galaxy Fold, I'll post it to my Instagram at the Mr. Mobile. And the customary disclosure, this video was made possible by a 10-day review device loan from Samsung. No compensation was requested and no copy approval was granted. As always, Samsung is seeing this at the same time you are. Let me know what you think of the Galaxy Fold, the Huawei Mate X, the Motorola Razr, and whatever other foldable phones you know about that I might not down in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.